Hey there, this is Carl from the RO Bucket. A lot of customers ask me when it's time to change their reverse osmosis membranes, and the simple answer to that is, um, you know, if you're happy with the overall performance and you haven't noticed a major decrease in the total flow rate of your system, they're probably functioning properly and you don't need to worry about it too much. But if you want to do a more in-depth analysis and really get to know the health of your membranes going into the next season, there's some really effective, inexpensive ways to do that um, relatively quickly. So what I have in front of me here are three samples of water, and these are going to mimic the different, uh, the different uh, either water or sap that's coming in contact with your RO bucket. So let's say the first glass is maple sap coming out of the tree that has not been concentrated yet. The second glass, let's pretend that is concentrated maple sap. And then the third glass, let's pretend that that is permeate water. So essentially, our maple sap would be coming from the first cup. Our concentrate, let's say that's going into the second cup. And then our permeate is going into the third cup. So we're going to have three samples of um, water here to test, sap or water to test. So what you're going to want to use is a um, TDS tester. We sell these on our website. They're $8. Uh, what this does is this tests the electrical conductivity of the solution. So the electrical conductivity of the solution is going to depend on the total ionic content of that solution. So SAP has things like sodium, potassium, magnesium ions in them. In it, and those ions give it an electrical conductivity. This tester tests that and gives us a readout in parts per million. So for every one million water molecules, this is going to tell us how many of those water molecules are an ion, like sodium, potassium, magnesium, etc. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to turn it on, <clears throat> and then once it reads all zeros, you're going to put that into your maple sap, and you're going to record the reading. So maple sap, traditionally, I found it's between maybe 200 to 400 parts per million. So you're going to want to write that number down. So that's the total ionic content in parts per million of your maple sap. Then what we're going to want to do is insert that into some concentrated maple sap, sap that you concentrated with your RO bucket. And you're going to want to notice that reading. Now that should be much, much higher. That should be somewhere around 500 or 600. Uh, because, again, it's concentrated. We concentrated those ions. And then we're going to want to look at our permeate water. Now, this is the most important one because the total ionic content of our permeate water is going to pretty much directly tell us the health of our membrane. We're going to want to look for a number in our permeate water that is 10% of the initial maple sap that we concentrated. So if we started with... Uh, sap that had 300 parts per million of ionic content, we're going to want to look for a number that's 30 or less. And if you do this with new membranes, you'll actually see it's probably somewhere between like 8 and 15. Um, these things work extremely well at, at the relatively um, high pressures that we run these systems at. So what you're going to want to do is write that number down. Write down your initial reading you get at the beginning of the season. Uh, maybe write it on your bucket somewhere or jot it down on a pad of paper. And then throughout the season, just test this maybe two or three times throughout the season and just make sure that that number isn't creeping up. Because if that number is creeping up, that means we're passing more ions. And once you get over 10%, over 30 parts per million or you get close to 40 parts per million, you're going to want to do a, a flush with some RO soap like that we provide in the little vials. Uh, or like a hydrogen peroxide rinse to, uh, to get your membranes back up to snuff so that you're not passing those ions. Uh, another simple test you can do outside of testing for ions, and I know a lot of people already do this, is just using a simple sap hydrometer to test the sugar concentration of your permeate. That should be, you know, at zero. I'm gonna, let, let's just say it's going to be at testable limits of your hydrometer. So what, what I've noticed is we need to be really careful and if it's 0.1 or 0.2 not go crazy thinking we're passing sugar because you know we might not be reading the instrument correctly the temperature might not be what we think it is so just keep an eye on that number and if it's anything over like 0.3 or 0.4 um, I, I would say that that's probably not a user error in reading that instrument and it probably actually is passing some sugar so that's something else you're going to want to look for throughout the season as well. So in summary Test three samples of, of uh, liquids, test your initial maple sap, test your concentrated sap, and then test your permeate for both sugar and for uh, conductivity using a total dissolved solids meter. If you have any questions or would like more uh, information on testing your uh, membrane health, shoot us an email at sales at therobucket.com.